Hey YouTube, um, Aiden slash Just Aiden here to talk about a little bit of an equipment update. Obviously I haven't made a video in like three, three or four weeks, something like that. I apologize, I'll talk about that in an upcoming video I think. Let's just go over a couple small equipment changes. I thought I made a video about this like three weeks ago, but apparently I didn't. So, um, not a lot of huge things have happened, honestly. Um, but let's go over what has changed. This. Now is a new lead pipe. Um, the King 3B comes with a two-piece lead pipe that has a receiver and then a lead pipe, kind of like a trumpet does. Um, they have a separate receiver that just holds a mouthpiece, and then after that, the lead pipe starts and goes until the tuning slide. And these were kind of the same idea, um, which is really odd. They're kind of one of the only instruments, especially in the modern era, that had a two-piece lead pipe like that. Um, and it's doubly odd because the 3B started with a single-piece lead pipe, as far as I know. Um, it was a different design to start, and they added in this two-piece lead pipe that nobody else does at all, um, especially now. And so that's just kind of a weird thing. Um, some of them play really well. I thought mine was actually pretty good as it was. It was just different enough, though, in how it played than all of my other instruments, because obviously they all have just one-piece lead pipes, like everybody does now. So I decided to change it out. A lot of people recommended the Brad Close 32H um, copy lead pipe, which is not for 3B, but um, is in the same bore size as 3B. So I put it in, um, and it was very loose at the top, because obviously the bottom of it is the right size for the slide, but the top is not. So I had it soldered in later um, by John Sandhagen. So now it's just a one piece, it's soldered in, it's one thing now, and I really like how this plays. It's a little different now, it just kind of blows differently. Some things are much better, some things are about the same. Um, I don't think anything is just obviously worse, but it made the horn just more even, and more, most importantly, I think, made it much more similar to my other instruments, um, just in how you can play it. So I would play this a lot. Maybe I've had three or four days of work where I'd play this in a row, and I'd feel great about it, and then I'd go to my other instruments and be like, whoa, it's a totally different world in how you play them. I do still play this differently, obviously because it's smaller, but um, the sleep pipe has brought it a lot closer to the other instruments. And that didn't cost a whole lot, um, maybe it's like 200 bucks all in. So so far this 3B has cost me like thousand dollars or something like that, which is pretty good for a Silver Sonic 3B. <laughs> Made with a bunch of janky parts, um, really happy with this. That's one of the bigger changes. The other big change I think is that... Um, I'm back on my Shire's dual bar slide on my bass trombone. I had not been using this because it didn't fit um, the side receiver on my Meinl Schmidt open full of valves um, is an Edwards receiver. Edwards and Shire's are like kind of the same, but just not same enough to really work. And so when I would use this on my new valve set, the whole thing, if I played too much second valve, um, the whole thing would just flop over. And that's just the most annoying thing on the planet when you're trying to like play through an etude and it just goes stink. Um, and so I had the slide tenon from my other Shire, or Edwards dual bar slide soldered on here, which was a super easy thing to do actually. Um, and it still doesn't quite fit, which is really annoying because this should be an Edwards part. The other thing is an Edwards part. Everything should just work completely perfectly and it still doesn't. Um, so for whatever reason it still doesn't, but I'm using this anyway because it works a little better and I hadn't been playing this because one, it didn't fit, and two, I felt like my bass drum opening was just not very good and when I got this out my high range would just disappear, my sound would get really diffused and I was like, no, no I need to stick with the dual bore, or with the, the single bore because I'm just not playing very well. But I had a kind of eureka moment lately and this feels a lot better now. So I'm going to use it for a little bit, see what happens. Um, I'm happy that I can use it. Not super happy that it still doesn't fit. I don't know what's up with this. I swear we put on the Edwards tenon. If I just put the Sh the Shires tenon on again, that'd be really funny. Um, I also bought one of Phil Teal's mouthpieces. Phil Teal, if you don't know, was the bass trombonist in the studios here in Los Angeles. Um, I'm not sure if he's around in the 60s, probably late 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, etc. He played bass trombone, contra all sorts of other things on basically every movie you'd ever heard um, for like 30 years. He did something like, I don't know, 1400 soundtracks or something like that. 
Um, really big name. Um, he came up with the teal method for playing pedals and not shifting and stuff. I have his book. I also have one of his music stands, um, but he recently died. Um, he was older and I think he had some kind of cancer. Not totally sure on that. But the stuff in his estate has been sold. Um, I have a friend who got one of his trombones and I bought one of his mouthpieces and it's one of the ones he actually used which is kind of neat. It was very dirty when I got it um, from him playing it. So I cleaned it out. Um, it's not something that I'm going to use probably at all but it's a really cool mouthpiece. It's made by Marcinkowitz. Um, it's very well made, obviously. Marcin Wiss makes great stuff. Um, it's kind of like a large George Roberts mouthpiece. The rim is a little larger. It's a very thin rim. Um, it's actually very easy to play. It's got great pedals. Um, just a lot smaller than anything I would use. So that's a cool little find. Um, I'm glad I have this. It's definitely going to go into the collection and it's going to stay there. Um, my large tenor has not changed at all. So that's cool. I'm using the same. Great Black Alessi 3.5M, um, which is not a perfect mouthpiece. I don't think I need to just put in a lot of time on it. Um, the high register is a little more difficult than I would prefer. Um, obviously, I can put in a lot of work and make it easier, but I have other mouthpieces that just kind of do that without the work. So I'm going to keep using it for now. I've been playing this a lot. I've been playing in opera, and we've had, I don't know, seven or eight shows so far. I have three more to go this week, including one tonight. And uh, the mouthpiece has been great. Um, it's really highlighted some things I was really bad at. Not the mouthpiece, but the the opera, and I've really got a chance to dial in and work on these things. The mouthpiece has been great. I can play super, super duper loud on it, and the lower range is really good. It's kind of a couple other things I need to work on. So there we go, um, small equipment update. Also my uh, 50 b 3 og my other bass trombone, is torn apart, it's in shreds, and it's having my Shires valves put on. So someday, soon, I'll have another bass drum on with good valves with a Bach Gold Bell, which I've never had before. All right, I have had before, but not for a long time. Um, I'm really excited to see how that turns out. I would love to have another really good bass that I can use. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Another video upcoming about why it took such a long break.